Okay, today's project. This is what I've been working on. Got myself a nice piece of fabric over here. Some vinyl, black vinyl. Kind of matches the stuff that's in the car right now. But this is the, the gauge cluster. And I had, in the old car, uh, this gauge used to sit over there. And right over this direction, I had a computer, kind of a trip computer type thing that's out over there. But I'm not doing the trip computer thing anymore, so it's gone. So I had to build this little piece of wood today. And I had to drill out that hole, at least in part, and I used a jigsaw to finish it up. But anyway, it's going to go right there. I'm going to wrap the, wrap the stuff over. But before I get to that point, I've also got to fill in, if you can see this edge over here. i got to fill that in because that's where the computer used to sit. A little edge right over there, right down in there. So, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I think this is enough for today. Right, well, that's kind of neat. I think that'll, that'll go together and look real nice. Okay, a little update on today's and yesterday's work. I had finished putting on the, uh, the vinyl for that little box right there. But uh, the way it mounts with the tacks on the back side and whatnot, there wasn't any way to mount it from this side without putting a bunch of nails through it. And of course that, that wouldn't look very good. So I ended up making this little cross brace right there. Picked up a couple of wing nuts so I could mount it. And then I pinned it in place with a couple of screws. And then you tighten it all up and the entire assembly fits in there. Nice and solid. And it looks pretty clean. not too bad but in order to build that little cross member right there it looks pretty straightforward but uh, it came from that out at this end over here and this is a deck tie a little inexpensive deck tie I think I spent uh, who knows 70 cents on that so just get the Get my clippers out, do a little clipping on it, get my Dremel out, do a little bit more work on it. But what I need to do next is this, is the tack. And the way the tack fits in there, it's so tight on this side and that side over there that the factory, the factory cross brace, of course it would have been bigger than this one right here, but the factory cross brace wouldn't fit down in that hole. So right now all I've got this thing held in by is gravity. So if you shake it a little bit, it'll pop out. We don't want that popping out. So I've got to build another one of those cross members for this thing. And man, it takes a lot of time to get those cross members built. It looks pretty simple. I mean look at it right there. Pretty straightforward, right? Oh what a pain. But that'll be next. But it looks pretty clean. And I don't know if there's enough light to be able to show it, but let's go up here into the car. And it sits right up there, just like that. And it's held in place by the shifter. The shifter bolts in. And all your wiring, wiring then ends up being pretty centrally located. So you got your get all your factory wiring up under here. And of course, there's the speedo. And I'm going to take a lot of the wires that I've got to use for tying the I've got to tie the box into the car's electrical system. So a lot of that stuff will be taken from the speedo and run down behind the dash back in through that area right there. And then it'll come down in here. It'll be nice and clean. And here is here's the actual wire that I've got for running all the gauges and the stuff and the power to the back seat. So that goes back in back through here. And I've got it running through the back seat. The back seat's actually shut for a moment. 
Here, let's pull the back seat forward. So the back seat's going to come forward. And you run it through that crack right there, it runs around the back. And over to there, where it goes into the engine compartment. That's all nice and clean. That looks good. And I'm going to run it down here under the carpet, up under this piece of carpet. I'm going to bring it up through a hole right behind the gauge, which will be eh, somewhere around, somewhere around there. I'll shove all the excess up inside the box. And I'll have some quick disconnects. Here's all the connects that we got. Pretty straightforward. Just use a piece of wood as the as my ground insulator there, you know. And uh, it looks pretty cheap, but it's pretty effective. We'll tie the car in here, there, and there. And then the gauges and whatnot are these four. We're now going to run through that cable and come to the back. This is what I've got at the back. This is the end of that one particular cable. And it's got seven individual wires in it. And they come into a nice little fuse block here. And the cover comes off. And I've got all the output stuff right there. I should go back on there, no problem. There we go. From my car, my 74, which is right behind me, I took this little thing right here. This is a, this is kind of a splitter for hydraulic fluids. So this is the temperatures. The temperatures now right here inside the engine compartment instead of out over there under the fender. Uh, I got the oil pressure gauge and the warning sender tied in nice and clean right there. And while I was doing all this stuff, I ended up busting this one. Look at that right there, huh? Busted. Nice. Alright, and here it is about an hour later. Who knows? Look at that. Beautiful, huh? All the way up and down. Okay, there's the extra cross brace I just made. Got my extra wing nuts. Bought those yesterday in anticipation of having to do that. There's the top one. Pretty from that side. Look at that, huh? Nothing moves. Perfect. Awesome. Got plenty of extra fabric just in case I need to do some more. I don't think I will. Looks good.